watch these final games before Big 12 play picks up. Uh, what's or do you feel like you're getting the right rotation that you that you're expecting? Still. I don't know. I didn't count them. And I think we're fine. Um, I think the, the key thing was getting Dax back, and now that we got Yo. Dax back and figured out a rotation with Dax, I think we're fine. Let's go, boys. Now, what have you seen out of the younger guys and what they've been able to contribute um, in this stretch here of the non-conference games? Well, we throw a lot of things at them. So, you know, we're... They're, they're still thinking and not, not playing. Um, they've got to get comfortable in, in what we do and not think, is this the right rotation to make or is this where I'm supposed to be? Right side, they, need out. To, they need to just go ahead and do it without thinking. So um, They got a long way to go. Part of the challenge with with coaching young guys like that is they get that they see that big lead and, and kind of break away from schemes. No, I don't think they've done that at all. It's just we got six of them. You know, ordinarily you you put one or two in with three guys that know what they're doing and they kind of help them. And for the most part now, when we put them in there, they're in there with five other guys or four other guys that don't know what they're doing. So it's. We got a lot of freshmen. Six freshmen is a lot of freshmen. This is a crucial stretch for them? For the freshmen? Yeah. I don't even know what's crucial. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that, you know, like Sags can play, you know, in spots. Magic can play in spots. Chase can play in spots. We're not going to count on them to play extended minutes. And they'll be a whole lot better when they're with four guys that know what they're doing. They'll be a whole lot better when they're in there with Dax and JC and Nate and guys that know what they're doing and really don't have to think about it. You're scoring a lot of points um, and, and I know some shots and extra possessions and turnovers, but you look like you're shooting it better. And I think of the couple of halves you've really had to run offense like Temple and certainly against UVA. It's by and large worked pretty well. Um, can you tell I, I, that you're a better offense? I thought we, I thought from the beginning we were going to shoot it better. This group put just a, a ton of time in the gym in the summer. And, and I think they were, I think it helped that all those old guys were in there working out. You know, I think they saw a little bit what it takes to, you know, to, to continue to play and, and make money playing basketball. So, particularly the older guys who were, you know, the J, uh, JC and Tariq and Nate and those guys were in there. I think JC's always been in there, but I think the other guys have been in there more than what they were before, certainly. Is it hard to get a gauge when there's a layup line sometimes when teams are turning it over as often as they have? Because you really can't you know, get a steal on six half court, because you don't want to do that, but you'd like to work on some things, but 40 turnovers in a game is prohibitive. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it's. We get to work on rotations, and we get to work on different looks, different the way different people try to break it. Um, it's better than playing against yourself. Offensively, though. Oh, Mike, I mean that's it, it, that's, that's kind of it, it's it, it's that way everywhere. I mean, you you look at. Uh, like, for instance, people are, are saying Michigan State had a really hard schedule. They did. Now they go into a, whatever, a six-game deal that they're playing people like we're playing. I mean, the reality of it is we have to play home games because we have to make money. 